Parsha is the Parshat Re'e. We are in the middle of a series of speeches that Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, is giving to the people of Israel before they're about to enter the land of Israel. In other words, they're on the other side of the Jordan River. Moses, we know, is not permitted to enter the land. He's already pleaded with God numerous times, let me, please, I beg you, forgive me for what I did wrong in the desert, but it doesn't happen. He's going to die on that side. So he knows it's his farewell speech. He's extremely concerned about the people's future, and he's informing them, teaching them, admonishing them, warning them, giving them instruction. A lot of deals, of course, are with legal sections. Now, the section we have in Parshat Re'e, very important for every society, for the Jewish people, for all of humanity. The Torah is a very realistic document. Moses is a realistic leader. So he knows, he knows that there will be people in the community who will have difficulties. They'll have difficulties economically. They'll have difficulties literally feeding their families. So the Torah starts by saying, Moses says in this speech, there should be no needy among you. Right? Wonderful, perfect. Was he giving a messianic vision? There should be no needy among you. If you observe the Torah, if you observe these teachings. Then we understand what he means, because the very next paragraph, what he says, if, however, there is a needy person among you, then you have to do so and so. So what is he saying? What he says, there'll be no needy among you. What he's really saying is, if you observe God's law, which means, you're really going to care for your fellow human beings, for everyone in your community, there won't be someone needy because you will provide for him. It's not that he won't be needy, it's that he won't be left needy. So he says, it will happen. There will be people. Circumstances will arise beyond people's control that will put them in severe distress, including unable to feed their families. So he, the Torah tells us, Moses tells us, that's unacceptable. Can't happen. God will always provide enough food. There'll be enough food in the world, but God's not the distributor. We're the distributor. To make sure that everyone has sufficient food, healthy enough food to sustain them, is an absolute mandatory situation for every society, not just for the Jewish people. It is intolerable to leave people hungry. And of course, most hunger in the world that does exist is exactly because we don't distribute the food. There is enough food in the world to make sure everybody can eat, but due to political considerations, societies that are corrupt, we do have times that there is starvation. This realism that there will always be needy people reminds us that we must always be prepared for that situation. It shouldn't be a surprise. We need a society that has the right institutions. We have to have the right mindset to make sure we're always feeding those who are hungry. In a few weeks, we're not too far from the high holidays, and we will have that fast day of Yom Kippur. And the fast, Isaiah says, is to remind us to observe the commandments. It says, if you fast and you don't observe God's ethical teachings as if you didn't fast at all. It's to give us the ethical base for our life. So here's a suggestion based upon what Moses said, what the Torah has taught us. We know that we'll always be hungry. We know we have to contribute to food banks. We know that we have to support legislation that makes sure that people in this country and elsewhere have sufficient food. It's the absolute number one mitzvah in our tradition that people should be fed in a dignified way. So consider this for Yom Kippur. Calculate in your mind what it would have cost to feed the family during Yom Kippur. And of course, we're fasting, so we're not feeding our family. Take that amount and donate it to a food bank. Maybe our kosher food bank here in the Miami area. Any food bank. Or a great organization called Mazon. Mazon is the word food. It's an organization by Jews who have put this together for the purpose of supporting food banks both in the Jewish and the non-Jewish world. They do the research, they find out who's feeding people efficiently, properly, fairly, at the best cost, in other words, without waste. They do an amazing job, it's called Mazon. Look it up on the web and say, this is what I would have spent in Yom Kippur, and write a check to Mazon or to any food bank that you want, and then you'll have really performed the mitzvah of Yom Kippur, the fast that reminds us what it is to take care of others. Because at the end of the fast, we're all, we're all going to break fast and we're going to have a feast. We know it. But there are people in this world who, when the fast is over, they're still hungry. They don't have a place to go to break fast. In other words, they don't have food from day to day. So that's what we need to do this Yom Kippur, 
to remind us of what Moses, our teacher, taught us in Parsha Re'eh, the Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.